Hello everyone and welcome to another furniture flipping video. My name is Samuel with Cedar Pine Designs and in today's video I will go over the steps I took to refinishing this 9 drawer mid-century dresser and at the end I will go over what kind of profit I made so be sure to stick around for that and let's jump straight into this project. I like to start every project by taking all the drawers out and numbering them so that they are placed back into their original slots because over time each drawer will carve its own personal grooves out making its fitment to that spot very important. As you can see from the video, a lot of the original hardware is missing and will need to be replaced, as well as some really dated drawer liners that are luckily not glued in and easy to remove. I was very surprised to see so much dust behind these drawers and can tell pretty quickly that they carved out a very deep groove into the sides, which is why it is very important to number the drawers. I'm using a painter's brush to loosen the dust as my blower wasn't able to remove it all in order to prepare it for a well needed cleaning. I'm still using TSP as my main cleaning degreaser which after wiping down will need to be gone over with a clean towel and some water to get rid of this light, tacky residue left over. I decided to go with a chemical stripper to remove all the old finish to the surfaces I plan on saving the wood and restaining. I'm using Clean Strips Premium Stripper which works amazing and in just 15 minutes you can begin to scrape it all off. But due to it being a very strong chemical, be sure to wear gloves and a good mask or respirator in a well ventilated workspace. If you don't apply enough stripper, it can dry up a bit and a second coat will need to be used to remove the remaining finish that was left behind. The smaller side drawers are going to be painted, so they only require a light scuff sand with 150 grit sandpaper to create a rough surface for the paint to stick to, resulting in a stronger bond between each coat. I'm using clean strips mineral spirits to clean any finish that the stripper leaves behind and give the wood a good amount of time to dry before attempting to do any sanding. These drawers had quite a bit of chipping in the veneer and dents in the wood so I'm using a wood filler to patch all those imperfections leaving me an even smooth surface that will be ready for paint. All the surfaces that aren't being stained, I will be giving it a light scuff sand using 150 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander to get the job done fast. For the smaller grooves that I can't use my sander on, I hand sand those areas being sure to only scuff sand and not remove too much of the finish to avoid bleed through when it comes time to paint. Sanding can be a very tedious step of the process, but it is the most important. Prepping a piece as much as possible will make all the difference when it comes to painting and in the quality of the finished product. So don't get discouraged and skip this step no matter how daunting it may be. Once the top has had some time to dry, I go ahead and I start sanding with 150 grit sandpaper followed by 220 grit as my final stage. Any higher in grit can cause the grain to seal itself and not accept stain very well, so keep that in mind before you try to give it too much of a fine sanding. For light scratches and gouges, I tilt the sander slightly on its edge to help remove those scars. But this is very risky when working with veneer, so be sure not to stay in one spot too long or apply too much pressure to keep from blowing through the wood and causing more damage. Now that the filler is nice and dry, I use my orbital sander to knock it down and smooth it out just before I get ready to move on to the next step, which is painting. 
The middle drawers were in pretty good shape, so they will be sanded down to bare wood in order to stain them. I did use stripper on these as well, but didn't think I had to film it as it's the same steps as the top. I had to flip the dresser on its back in order to remove the legs, as they will be stripped down to bare wood and stained. I really love to incorporate very nice contrast between painted surfaces and the stained wood, as well as give the piece a very symmetrical feel. A 150 grit sandpaper makes quick work of removing the finish on these legs, but it is a bit awkward to hold so be careful not to catch your hand with the sander and wear your glove on the wrong hand like I did. I stick by my rule of always using a pre-stained wood conditioner before I try to apply my stain. It keeps the wood from coming out too blotchy or uneven in color. Be sure to apply your stain within the first 10 minutes because if the conditioner dries, stain will no longer penetrate the wood and will have to be sanded back down to bare wood and no one wants to do any more sanding than they have to. I'm using an oil based stain made by Verithane in a red oak color to try and get close to the original color. Apply the stain in sections on bigger surfaces and let sit for a few minutes before removing any excess. You can let it dry and apply a second coat if you want the color to get a little darker and a little richer. After the stain has had at least 12 to 24 hours to dry, I'm masking the top off as the body of the dresser will be painted along with the six outer drawers. The masking paper I used is about 18 inches wide and just happens to be the perfect size that I only had to apply the tape to all the edges. The color I chose for this piece is limousine leather which is a soft black made by Bear that I mixed with water in order to run it through my HVLP spray gun. I seem to use this color combination a lot and that's because it's a very popular color in my area and it seems to sell very well. I can't recommend these paint filters enough. They definitely keep my equipment from clogging up and keep debris out of the paint that can cause a number of issues that aren't fun to deal with. When using a paint sprayer, try as much as possible to start each pass just off to the sides of your piece. This can reduce runs and the buildup of paint in one concentrated area. HVLP spray guns can cause a lot of overspray in the air, so be sure to wear a mask or respirator and work in an area that has very good ventilation. I usually apply two thin coats and a third thicker final coat of paint with sanding in between each coat. After the first coat, I will use 220 grit sandpaper, and after the second layer of paint, I use a 400 grit in order to keep from leaving scratches behind that can be seen through the paint. The wood grain is pretty coarse on this piece, so the first coat of paint acts like more of a filler, as you can see a lot of the wood grain after I sand it down. Once the second layer is applied, the coverage is much better, but from certain angles you can still see small scratches, so 400 grit sandpaper and a third coat will look much better.
This paint goes on with a slight blue tint to it, but as it dries, it goes away and the soft black color really starts to show. I always use my favorite top coat and that's Verithane Poly in a satin finish. It's water based so it dries fairly quickly and just like the painting process, I lay out three coats with sanding in between each coat. I mix black paint with my poly in order to keep it from hazing or streaking and it also acts as another coat of paint. This particular top coat doesn't need any water mixed with it to work with my sprayer. But what I found is that you need to apply each coat in thin layers because this stuff when sprayed too thick will cause running resulting in a lot of extra sanding. Once I was finished spraying my tinted top coat, I removed the masking paper in order to finish the top of the dresser as well as the drawers and legs with untinted poly. After removing the tape, I did notice a few spots where the stain came up a bit, but I just had to apply a little bit more stain to those areas and let it dry before I continued to apply my top coat. The top of the dresser and the drawers are high traffic areas and have the most potential for damage. So this is where I like to go a little thicker with the top coat, and this is one of those areas I don't have to worry about causing any running issues. Now it's time to get this dresser back on the ground so that the legs can be reinstalled, and all that's left to do is install the hardware and put the drawers back in. The hardware I chose for this piece are some very elegant single gold pools with a black leather loop and I think they complement this dresser perfectly. Let me know in the comments below if you would have went in another direction with this hardware or if you like the ones that I chose. Now that the hardware is installed, let's get all the drawers back in and see what this piece used to look like and what it looks like now after that it's finished. I'm very pleased with the final results of this dresser, and for the profit side of this flip, let's talk about the numbers and what it took to get this dresser to where it is now. I paid $120 for this dresser from Facebook Marketplace, I paid $20 for the drawer pulls shipped through Amazon, and I had all the material from previous projects, but I'll add about $25 more for that, bringing my total up to $165. I put about 12 hours total into this project, and I can't believe it, but I sold this piece to an interior designer for $850, bringing my total profit to $685, or around $57 an hour, making this my highest profited piece to date. I'd like to thank everyone for making it this far with me, and I appreciate all the support I've been receiving. Take care, and I can't wait to see you on my next project.